Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to do the second of my two Christmas Day 2020 beer reviews. And I have to say, this is one that I'm really excited to try, actually. First off, though, I just want to wish those of you watching a very, very Merry Christmas. Um, you know, the whole COVID-19 pandemic has put a little bit of a dampener on the season, but make sure you have a nice time with your immediate family, friends if you can, and just, uh, you know, enjoy some nice craft Beers, enjoy some nice food, relax a little bit and uh, just wait for this whole thing to blow over. Most importantly though, make sure you stay safe, wash your hands, you know, wear the masks when you go outside, all of this kind of thing because, you know, it really does help and fingers crossed in 2021 we can get a more kind of normal uh, Christmas and New Year but it's looking likely that the whole, that the worst of this will be gone sometime, you know, like March, April or something of, uh, of 2021 so fingers crossed that is what happens but in the meantime make sure you stay safe and from me to you a massive thank you for all of your support over the last year or so or beyond you know some of you guys have been watching for a very long time the channel is seven and a half years old now it's getting old like me but um yeah as i say uh, awesome to have supporters like you guys uh, watching the channel for so long it really is fun but yeah um as you would have seen it the first of the two christmas day 2020 beers was the um a double crust raspberry pie, a 9% imperial pastry sour from Vault City Brewing, originally from Edinburgh but now brewing most of their beers up at 71 Brewing in Dundee. Definitely one of the Scottish breweries to watch at the moment. I'm not sure how I feel about the whole pastry sour kind of thing. Um, maybe it is something I need to get a little bit more used to, but for me they don't quite match the Bellina Vices and the um, the Gozes and things like that that you're getting. Um, I, I, yeah, I just I think the pastry sour is something that I maybe need to get a little bit more used to. But for this review then, we are going to go to the other side of Scotland. We're going to go over to Glasgow and we're having a look at another beer from a brewery that is featured on the channel only once before. But the last beer I had from these guys was very, very impressive. So I will say that I do have very high hopes for this one. So for this review then, as I say, we're going back to Glasgow and we're having a look at my second beer from Dead End Brew Machine. So this one is called The Sun Gone. It it comes in at 10.5% ABV and they're describing this one as a cinnamon bun double stout. So I thought this would be a nice beer to kind of bridge the gap between Scotland and Sweden. You know, I do miss the Canel Buller when I come home, but um, yeah, the, the Swedish cinnamon buns, I think that is something that could do very well if it was introduced to Scotland. But yeah, 10.5% Imperial Stout, this one, it has a very interesting malt bill and uh, adjunct bill added to it, so we'll talk about that a little bit later in the review, but like I say, very curious to see what this one has in store for us. So the last beer that I tried from these guys was the Nightland and that is honestly one of the best Imperial Stouts I've reviewed on the channel and the fact that it came from Scotland was just a little bit, uh, you know, it was just a little bit special for me. But um, yeah, if you do find the Nightland from these guys, I think you really will uh, enjoy this one actually. I think the um, these guys, from what I've heard, they do have a little bit of a knack for, uh, for Imperial Stouts. I think maybe um, the owner has found a very good base recipe for Imperial Stouts. But uh, yeah, this one, it should be very nice. In a few videos time, you will see another review from these guys, and that will be the Total Fury, which is a passion fruit uh, IPA. So really looking forward to trying something from the lighter end of the spectrum from these guys as well. And I hope that I can get a hold of Boris the Crusher at some stage, their barley wine, because a lot of people have told me that's one that I really need to get a review done of but um, yeah really looking forward to this one and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well definitely nice to do another review for Dead End Brew Machine these guys in my opinion would be getting the same level of hype as Overtone and uh, Vault City if they were brewing on a bigger scale their beers are still quite hard to get it's quite difficult to get them outside of Glasgow from what I've seen thus far but um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then so as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done it from dead end brew machine before and hopefully we can add more to that in the near future like i said there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity but quite regularly at the moment because I am home in the motherland and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely 
hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Dead End Brew Machine then, onto my brewery notes. So Dead End Brew Machine, as I've told you already, are based in Glasgow and the company was founded by Irishman Chris Lewis, who was a very highly regarded home brewer. So he and his friend Jake Griffith, who now is the main man behind Upfront Brewing, I do recommend you check out those guys as well. Uh, the two of them won the Institute of Distilling's Home Brewing Award back in 2012 and this inspired them to go on and start their own companies and both of them have done that and they've done quite well out of it. But Chris started winemaking back in uh, 2008 and he said that his wine was pretty awful but he later learned that it was much quicker to make beer and so he went to his local home brewing shop which happened to be run by Scott Williams of Williams Brothers another brewery that I would recommend you check out, one of my locals here in Clipmanager in central Scotland. Um, but he was later convinced to launch his beer commercially um, by Derek Hoy of the now defunct Hippo Beer Group in Glasgow. They had their uh, shop, which I think I want to say that was on Queen Street in the West End, and um, they also uh, had their bar for a short period of time as well. Derek, I met Derek once, very nice guy, so was quite ha sad to hear that Hippo Beer went under. Um, but at the moment these guys are operating as a sort of gypsy client brewery if you like. So a number of their beers were brewed originally at Fallon Brewing in Kippen in Stirlingshire, again quite close to me in central Scotland. And they also brewed a number of beers at Drygate uh, in central Glasgow right next to the Tenants Brewery. That of course is a joint venture between Williams Brothers and uh, Tenants Brewery itself. Uh, but recently they've been brewing their beers at 71 Brewing up in Dundee and also at Overtone Brewing. Down in, uh, down in Glasgow, that's in Yoker, just to the western part of, uh, of central Glasgow actually. But as of December 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 70 different beers and they do seem to be pretty prolific actually. The best, as I say, they well, the only beer I've had from these guys so far has been uh, the Imper one of the Imperial Stouts and I was thoroughly thoroughly impressed with that one so you know and people have been telling me that they do have a bit of a knack for the darker and more malty beer so maybe we can see a scotch ale and a doppelbock from these guys maybe even a belgian quadruple that could be quite interesting actually but uh, yeah the next heavy review i think you'll see me do from these guys will hopefully be boris the crusher the barley wine very curious for that one but um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Dead End Brew Machine for the moment these guys do brew a variety of different styles so go and try some of their beers but in the meantime if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah let's get on and have a taste of this beer then very curious to see how it turns out so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. As you can see, it is quite similar to what we had from the Nightland before. Um, that beer, you know, very special. That's one that I will always remember. Um, but uh, yeah, they're describing this one, as I said, as um, a cinnamon bun double stout. I did take a note of the the malts and adjuncts and things that are in this one. So apparently this again uses 10 different types of malts. So probably what they're doing is they've got a solid base recipe and just playing around with it. Nerd Brewing in Malmö do that actually. I would love to see Dead End Brew Machine do a collaboration with um, with Nerd Brewing in Malmö actually. I need to talk to uh, to Hannes about that and get him in contact with, uh, with Chris. That would be awesome to see these guys do a collaboration together. But like I said, this beer does um, 10, it, it uses 10 different types of malt. It's got a number of, uh, it, it's got quite a bit of Tunisian deglet dates in it apparently, uh, a lot of cinnamon and also Tahitian vanilla along with some ancho chilies and one of the malts is Rauf malt as well actually. So this thing I think should be a bit of a beast. It's a 440 milliliter can and I think the guy on the phone from Valhalla's Goat told me I think I paid about £9 for this beer, but you know, when it's a dead end brew machine Imperial Stout, I genuinely do not care. I would pay, you know, after the last one, I would pay uh, that for these beers. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm very curious to see what this has in store for us. So um, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Tell you something, this beer on the pour, it certainly looks very red. It certainly has got a nice kind of red tinge to it, but look at how oily and thick that thing is. Yeah, that's crazy. There's still a wee bit of it left in the bottom, but I'm sure we'll put that into the glass a little bit later on. But yeah, as you can see, and as you'd expect from a big Imperial Stout, look at the lacing of that. It's taken ages to go back down. This is a big boozy monster, but you know, 10.5%. It's not the heaviest Imperial Stout I've come across right enough, but um, yeah, I think this one will be a bit of a beast. If I shine the light through this, the beer is pretty much black as night. 
there is a little bit of a kind of ruby edge to it on the very kind of edge, very edge of the glass, but there's about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say kind of medium tan head on this one. That's just faded away to be a very thin foamy layer. There is a little bit of a foamy ring around the edge of the glass, then a little bit of wispiness just kind of sitting um, on top of uh, of the head, the, of where the head should be in this one. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few small ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look um, it does look pretty damn nice actually. So I like how this one, uh, I do like how this one goes together in that sense. It certainly looks the part for an Imperial Stout. So um, yeah, let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we get on. Very curious about this beer, as I said. That does smell very nice. Um, I will say straight away, this one, it doesn't smell as complex as I remember the Nightland smelling, but I mean, um, sometimes, quite often I find when you add adjuncts into these beers, they can sort of, they, they sort of start to dominate the aroma, if you like. So maybe that's the reason. The Nightland was a little bit more of a kind of pure stout from what I remember. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things I guess we have to remember with this one. This one does have quite a few adjuncts in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this one's got some really interesting stuff going on. The Rauch malt, you can smell the Rauch malt really just forming the backbone of this beer. Um, you can smell the cinnamon buns in there, the Kinelbula, um, as we would say in Sweden. You know, you can smell that in this one for sure. Um, so yeah, the Rauch malts, they smell as if they're at the very kind of back layer of the beer. Then you've got that nice kind of, is it right to call it pastry, the sort of cakey bunny sort of thing sitting on top of that with the cinnamon just infused into it. That's what you get out of this beer. You can you can smell just a little bit of the spiciness from those chilies in this actually the ancho chilies. I'm not sure if the anchos are one of the really strong ones. I'm not. I don't mind spicy food, but I'm not you know madly into it as some people are. Um, but you can just you can smell a wee bit of the chili in there as well. You can just smell a little bit of that heat. Um, and I seriously hope that this is one of these beers where the heat is just a little subtle. Um, I'm not a, I'm not the greatest fan of chili stouts, I have to say, and I didn't realise until I bought the beer that it had chilies in it. But you know, <clears throat> hopefully it's well done. But I think it will be. I do have a good feeling about this. Um, but yeah, as I say, Ralph malts in the background there, the sort of cinnamony bun type quality there, sitting on top of it. You can smell a little bit of the heat from the chilies as well. Um, this thing is it, it does go together really nicely. You do get a good bit of vanilla further forward on the nose You can smell a little bit of the kind of chocolate on this one It smells like a blend between a, a kind of milky and dark chocolate, you know, maybe about a 50% Cocoa something like that. There's a milky element to it And there is a little bit of that kind of darker element right enough and you can smell a bit of the the dainty note coming out of this one but the more I smell of this beer as well, the more I get um, brown sugar out of it. You do get a sweet kind of caramelly note out of this one. There's a wee bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit in there, but you really smell it. That whole thing is just infused with uh, with cinnamon. It really is. The cinnamon, I think, really kind of takes over this one, if you like. But if it's, um, you know, when it's called a cinnamon bun double stout, then you would kind of expect that, actually. Um, yeah, that's a it's a really really interesting beer. This one, one of the uh, you know, one beer that I had in Sweden that was really that I think uh, will be or would have been whatever. Uh, I think this beer will be quite similar to it. Would be the um, Lusebula Stout that I had from Verndebrugge close to uh, to Stockholm. Um, I've got a feeling that this one might be quite similar to that, but just with a little bit of a hot edge to it. But yeah, the malt base has a hell of a lot of things going on in it there. Um, but the thing that really starts to dominate in this one as you go further into the, the aroma, as you smell it more and as your nose adjusts to it. The bun side of the cinnamon bun, which is to be expected, a little bit of the Rauch malt, um, you know, a little bit of the kind of biscuity and caramelly side of things, that is what really dominates in this one. Although in fairness, the uh, vanilla starts to push its way out a little bit as well. Um, on the hoppy side of things, um, I don't think there's too much to report on that, to be honest with you. You get a wee touch of earthiness out of it, you get a little bit of grassiness, um, maybe a tiny, tiny little hint of floral aromaticity, but there's not a lot to report on the green side of the hops with this beer, in my opinion. Um, Fruity-wise, you can smell the dates in this one, that sort of dried, datey kind of thing. Um, it's a little bit like Sultana's, to be honest with you. It's got that kind of dried white green grapey sort of thing to it, the dates. Um, so yeah, it does. You, you can pick out the dates. To me, if I was blind smelling this, I would probably think that it was like Sultana's or, um, you know, 
something like that. And um, you do get a little bit of red fruitiness out of this one, a bit of you know um, a bit of fig, maybe a little bit of a black currenty blackberry sort of thing. But you know that's to be expected from big, you know imperial stouts like this. You get that. Ju to me, it's more of a juicy currant with a little bit of that oily black um, blackberry sort of vibe to it as well. Um, but yeah, a little bit of fig. I don't really get the kind of plums or raisins and things out of this one. That really is more of a kind of dried sultana, datey type aroma out of this one. But when it's got all those Tunisian dates in it, that is not surprising. So um, yeah, definitely take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this one. Like I said, I don't find this as complex as the um, as the night land was. But then, as I said, I think adjuncts do dominate aromas a little bit compared to um, you know pure. Uh, all grain brewing, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. We'll put the last of the beer in the glass actually, because I'm going to sit and sip on this one for the rest of the day, pretty much. But um, yeah, this one is the Sun Gone 10.5% cinnamon bun, double stout, 10.5% ABV from Dead End Brew Machine through in Glasgow. Merry Christmas, stay safe, good year, um, Fro Weihnacht and whatever you guys want to say, whichever language it is, thank you for your support over the last year and beyond, and as I say, stay safe, have a very nice Christmas. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skaw. Ooh. That is very, very nice. Um, yeah, that's, it might, uh, what I will say is it might just be a little touch cold just now. It might just be a little touch too cold, but um, it comes across very, very nicely. It's another solid, solid beer from Dead End Brew Machine, so well done to them for this. Absolutely well done. Um, yeah. <laughs> This is uh, this is really really nice once again. It is actually very similar to that beer I mentioned earlier, the Lusabula Stout from uh, Verdu Brewery. Um, yeah, I like I like this. Swedes would like this beer. So um, if Chris is uh, is watching this one, and if you want to export a beer to Sweden, do this one next Christmas. That should be a goal for you. Get it into Sistembolaget uh, over in Sweden because this would go down very very well with the Swedes, I would think. Yeah, awesome, awesome stuff actually. Um, yeah, I think this is very, very nice. So again, thumbs up to Dead End Brew Machine for this one. Um, again, as I'd say in the flavour, it doesn't strike me as being quite as complex as the um, as the the Nightland was. But again, I think that's I think that's another effect. I think it's just adjuncts. I think when you add adjuncts into the beer. They tend to they they tend to do that a little bit, and I think this beer, what is it? It has the dates, the cinnamon, and the vanilla in it. So you know that's uh, and well four of the chilies as well. Um, you know there's four adjuncts in this one, so of course they are going to kind of take centre stage if you like. But um, so yeah, so I guess you could maybe say this isn't one of the more kind of purest efforts if you like, uh, purest brewing efforts from Dead End Brew Machine. But that certainly doesn't take away from it. This is a very nice. This is a very good kind of Christmas beer, this one, actually, I would say. But yeah, where to begin with this one then? So, straight away, in the middle of your palate, um, you can feel that nice kind of soft, bunny, bready sort of thing, just blanketing the, um, the middle of your palate there. You can feel that nice kind of cinnamon bunny. I don't even know whether it's right to call it bread or pastry or whatever, but you can feel that nice sort of cakey type thing just across the middle of your palate. There. The cinnamon is infused into that, and that just gives it a wee bit of a kind of spicy edge, if you like. If you go into the back third of your palate, you can feel that thickens up a wee bit. And I think there's a... I don't get the cinnamon as much in that back third of your palate. I think the beer in the back third, you do get a wee bit of the Rauch malt in there. You can start to feel just a little bit pardon me, of the ancho chilies down here. They're just, they're more of a kind of subtlety that comes out in the warmth of the beer uh, rather than anything. So they don't really dominate the flavour in this one at all, which was a wee bit worried about. As I said, not a great fan of um, chilli stouts by any stretch. Um, but they do, you know, they are quite nice in this one. I'd be curious to try this beer without that and just 
learn a little bit about exactly what they do contribute, but I think it is just a wee bit of the warmth that you're getting kind of down here that they're giving you. But yeah, it's another damn, damn solid beer. But yeah, on that back third of your palate, it's quite interesting. It's definitely got more of a kind of um, brown cakey type flavour in the back. So in the middle of the third of your palate, it's quite, it is quite bright and cinnamony. But in the back third of your palate, it's distinctly more kind of um, toasty, cakey sort of thing. It's got almost a wee bit, it's not brownie like, it's like a spicy, very cinnamony type brownie type character you've got there. But you can feel the Rauch malt in this one, I think, definitely comes out on that back third of your palate. But um, yeah, it goes together very, very nicely actually. I like how this one goes together in um, in that sense. So um, yeah, the beer that goes together, that th this beer just goes together really quite nicely. I think the further that you go into the aftertaste on that, on the front half of that front, uh, that middle third of your tongue, sorry, that's where you get the vanilla out of this one. I think it really comes out a little bit later. There's one or two. If you go to the front corners, you part then go diagonally backwards, there's a few woody undertones to the beer. Uh, if you go to the centre of your palate and then move forwards, you will get a little bit of nuttiness mixing in with that vanilla note that I was talking about. But um, yeah, in the very centre of your palate, you've got a nice, uh, you've got a nice kind of um, chocolatey character to this one. So yeah, I like how this one goes together in that sense. Yeah, about fifty percent. About f I would say about fifty percent um, cocoa chocolate. This one in that on the back third, uh, sorry, on the back half. Mixing it up all up now on that back half of the middle third of your tongue. That's where you get the chocolatey side of this beer coming out. It sits just on top of that kind of nice cinnamon, kind of bunny bready sort of thing that sits there. Um, you've got a nice little bit of a kind of fifty percent cocoa chocolate in there. There's a bit of a darker chocolate to this one. I actually would revise that and say this is maybe about a 60, maybe even pushing 70% cocoa chocolate. The further you go into the aftertaste, the darker chocolates start to push their way out of this one. But then in the very centre of your palate, you get a sweet caramel in there. And as you move further out on top of the chocolate and on top of the vanilla, it does get a little bit more kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity light. But uh, that even, even that feels like the cinnamon is just kind of infused into it. So this beer... It's got layers all over the place. There's a lot of things going on in this one. Uh, the back third of your palate, though, I would say, is quite straight up. You know, you've got a bit of the Rauch malt sitting underneath in there. You've got the kind of bunny, cakey sort of thing in there that comes across as a bit darker. Then it's almost a wee bit kind of powdery, like sort of chocolatey powdery, dark chocolatey powdery sitting on top of this one. And then you just get the kind of chilly warmth in the back of your throat too. This is a really very quirky beer. As I say, the, the adjuncts, I think play a big role in this one but it really does taste like the um like the Swedish cinnamon buns so it does what it says on the can actually it does what it says in the can um on the on the the hoppy side of things then in the back corners of the palate you do get a little bit of earthiness out of this one um as you move further forward I think um, it does get a wee bit more herbal and then as you reach the front corners of the palate it's very smooth at that point but there is just a little element of floral um, aromaticity there but then round the very front curve of the palate the beer is just a little bit lighter and grassy but again this one's got dates added into it and as I've told you in previous reviews when you add fruit into a beer it always suppresses a little bit of the hoppy side of things and that is most definitely going on here because the very front edge of your palate is really really smooth and just slightly oily and slick if you like so that's always something that you get that's always something that you get from these um, you know the, from, from when you add fruit into the beer definitely it suppresses a bit of the green side of the beer So yeah, on the um, on the fruity side of things then, um, underneath, on that front third of your palate, as I always say, that's where you get the nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. Underneath on the fruity side of things, you can feel a little bit of the, the kind of rauchy malts. They, they just kind of creep forward. I think the more that you drink of this beer, the more you get the rauchy side of things in here. Um, but yeah, definitely a little bit of that coming out in this one. Um, yeah, it goes, as I say, it goes together very, very nicely. Um, you can feel that nice kind of smoky um, type note in there. It's, it's like a kind of meaty smoke, you know. I think it's, it'll be Weyermann 
uh, Rauch malts that are in this from Bamberg in Germany. It's definitely not the peaty malts that are more kind of um, you know more earthy and grassy and things. But you definitely get a bit of that sitting underneath the front third of your palate there, which is quite unusual actually. I've never come across that in uh, an imperial in an imperial stout before. Even with the Nightland, I think that the smoky notes didn't sit underneath the fruits, which was kind of interesting. But um, yeah, if you go towards the back of that front third of your palate, you do get a wee bit of a kind of plummy note to the beer, but not a lot. I would say that it's more, yeah, it is a more, yeah, it's more of a datey kind of pruney sort of thing. Dates, I think, give you a little, it really has a bit of, on that front third of your palate, it's really got quite a sultana-like flavour to it, maybe a little bit peary almost as well, like really dried fruit. But as you go towards the front tip of the tongue, I think there's a wee bit of a black currant and a slightly more oily blackberry in there as well. But yeah, really it's very, very dry. Um, this one and it, it's it, well not dry it's like a very dried fruit kind of vibe that you get off this beer but definitely around the kind of front edge of the tongue you get that more sort of oily um, figgy sort of thing coming out of it so the um, how do you say the whole fruity side of this beer is um, you know is, is really quite interesting I think it's um, it's really quite quirky how this, this whole one goes together. I like that sort of dried fruit vibe that this beer has. So yeah, what I would say about this one in summary is that it's very different to the the Nightland actually. This is th this would strike me as more of a kind of Christmas release, um, if you like. I think this is a more kind of Christmas type stout actually. So this is the perfect time of year to review it, of course. But um, I like this one and I do think this would go down a storm in Sweden with the, the Kineldula type thing actually. So yeah, maybe releasing this beer in Chris, uh, at Christmas through Sistembolaget in Sweden could be a good shout for Dead End Brew Machine. But um, yeah, very, very solid beer. In, uh, in my mind once again so thumbs up to Dead End Brew Machine. Do I like it as much as the um, as the Nightland? I'm not sure that this one knocks off the pedestal knocks the, the the Nightland off the pedestal but mainly um, I do always just think that the, the kind of the more purest brewing ones I'm not against adjunct brewing by any stretch of the imagination but I do just think the purest brewings the level of flavour that that beer had for a, a you know a pure malt kind of pure all grain beer um, was was very impressive. So I don't think this one knocks the night land off the pedestal, if you like, but it's another damn solid beer from Dead End, and uh, you can't ask for more than that, really. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel, then, what will we say about this one? Um, yeah, pretty full-bodied beer, right in the middle of the full-bodied end of the spectrum. Um, the carbonation it's very very smooth. This beer does have a degree of slickness to it. It's definitely not the thickest of uh, Imperial Stouts that I've come across right enough. It is quite slick in a few ways if that makes sense but um, the other thing to remember is I've been drinking quite a few Scandinavian Imperial Stouts and I think that um, they are very hard to beat in terms of the, the kind of thickness and glurpiness if you like of them so maybe this is why this one feels a little bit slick. The Scottish water of course is another factor in here. I really think that the Scottish water makes the, the beers feel very very clean actually so this 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 imperial stout does about have a little bit of that almost kind of cleanliness factor to it actually and um, i forgot to mention earlier but i think this one this one is brewed at overtone brewing company and so they, their beers always have that kind of um clean sort of vibe to them as well so maybe that that's one of the reasons i think the last one that i reviewed was maybe brewed at um was maybe brewed at 71 in dundee so maybe their water comes across a little bit differently so this one does feel a little bit more kind of slick and lighter than the Nightland did but um, yeah this is again it's another very solid beer this is me almost nitpicking at it now but in terms of the um, hoppy bitterness um, what would we I don't think this beer is overly bitter to be honest with you um, Yeah, I don't really find this one that bitter, to be honest. Maybe it's about 40 or 50 I'd be used at most. This beer is more spicy rather than anything else. Um, so yeah, I'd say that maybe a 40, 50 IBUs. You can feel the bitterness uh, in the sides of your palate. There is a wee bit of earthiness and stuff. And graininess comes out of this beer the further you go into the aftertaste. But the malt base is more kind of grainy and spicy almost. It's got a good bit of sweetness to it as well. And then you've just got a little bit of a kind of dried fruity vibe to this beer the further that you go into the aftertaste with it. But um, yeah, I think it's a really, really nice beer, this one. It goes together um, very, very nicely and it, it gets a thumbs up from me. It, it would go down a storm in Sweden, like I said, and um, it certainly suits my taste. But uh, you do, I would say, cinnamon isn't 
such a common thing in Scotland, so maybe this beer might not go down as well in Scotland as it might in, 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 in Scandinavia, but um, yeah, it is, again, it's very, very nice. If I hadn't moved to Scandinavia, I probably wouldn't like this beer, actually. I would say that if I hadn't gone to Scandinavia um, all those years ago and, um, and you know, gotten used to the canal builder and things like that, I probably wouldn't have, you know, I probably wouldn't appreciate what this beer is doing, but I really like this one. So thumbs up to Dead End Brew Machine once again, and I do look forward to reviewing more beers from these guys in the uh, in the near future. So like I said, the next one you see will be the Total Fury, which is a passion fruit IPA, I want to say. Um, so you'll see that in a few videos time when I get round to, to filming that. And as I say, I want to try the Boris the Crusher. But yeah, this is another awesome, awesome beer from Dead End Brew Machine. It's definitely one of the Scottish breweries to keep an eye out for at the moment. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favorite beers are from Dead End Brew Machine. We will return to these guys fairly soon and hopefully we can review a few more beers from them beyond the next one. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys a little bit later. So yeah, slange it, skull, cheers, and catch you guys on the next review.